Geometry Unit 2, Lesson 14, Isosceles and Equilateral Triangles. So in this lesson, we want to look at Isosceles Triangle Theorem and its converse, Equilateral Triangle Theorem and its converse, converse, and then use those two theorems or properties to solve equation, you know, solve problems and find different angles. So as an isosceles triangle is one with at least two congruent sides. Those are generally called the legs. The congruent sides are called the legs, and the one that's not or doesn't have to be congruent is the base. The angles that the base is part of are called the base angles, and then the ones that the leg makes up is called the vertex angle. So we're going to explore different tri isosceles triangles. So I want you to go ahead and draw an isosceles triangle. You're going to do, do the following. I'm looking for my, there's my, you'll need your protractor in a moment. So you can use your protractor, draw any angle. I'm going to try to draw an, uh, an obtuse one, if I can fit it in there. Okay, there's an obtuse angle. That's going to be my angle A. And then I want you to take your compass and make sure that two of the sides are the same by using the same arc radius for them. So you need to pick something which fits. I'm going to pick here at A. I'm going to draw my arc here and then swing that around and it touches there. So those are my two points B and C. And then I'm going to connect and make my triangle. So that will be my triangle with BC. And now I want you to go ahead and measure your angles. And I probably already recorded one of them for you. I want you to go ahead and you can record mine and yours, and then we'll have at least three of them. So if you draw one as well, I now want you to measure what you have for those three angles. So I'm going to go ahead and measure mine. While I'm measuring mine, you can measure yours. If you know how to do that, you line that up. This is the zero. I'm going to come this way. So angle A is about is about 73. Sorry, that can't be right. I'm reading the wrong scale because that's an obtuse angle. Sorry, that's 113. And then my B and C, if I measure B and line that up, and I don't have that quite extended, but that looks like it's it's probably going to be a halfway one. I have to extend this to be able to measure mine. So that's 30, 31, 32, that's about 33. And if you measure this one, again, I'll have to extend mine to be able to measure it properly. If I extend that one, make sure that's all lined up. That's also 133. And if we use the triangle sum theorem, this is 66. That only So we'll make this one 114. They have to add up to 180. It didn't come out quite right. But this one, I'm going to put mine here, 114 degrees, 33 degrees, and 33 degrees. And on your paper, I probably have written 52, 64, and 64, or I may have some other such number written. And you can put your own there. How do we know we've constructed isosceles triangles? So we use the same arc to do two sides, or the same compass radius. And because they have the same arc, the same arc gives the same length. We know that from before. So we have two of the lengths that are the same. And now what is our conjecture about these base angles that we have? 
So the first one I gave you were both 64. These are both 33. Yours might would have come up with something else. But the conjecture is, is that the base angles are congruent. So now we want to go ahead and formalize that more. That's actually the isosceles triangle theorem. The isosceles triangle theorem says that if you have two sides that are congruent for a triangle, then their two angles, the angles opposite them, so C is opposite from this, B is opposite from this, that those two angles will also be congruent. And then the converse says if the two angles are congruent, So if the two angles of a triangle are congruent, then the two sides opposite those angles are also congruent. And we want to prove both of those. We're going to prove both the isosceles triangle theorem and then the converse of that. And there is more than one way to do it. I've chosen one way down here. I've made a note about some other ways to do that. So what we're given is that this side AB is congruent to AC in this triangle, and we want to show that this angle is congruent to this one. So we start off with what's given. And in this case, we know, first of all, that this midpoint exists because we have segment addition, so there has to be a midpoint. And then we, can know, we know we can draw that line by the line postulate, so we can draw a D where D is the midpoint of AC. That line exists by the line postulate, if you like um, the fact that there's segment addition. And now BD is congruent to DCY. We know this is the midpoint, so BD is congruent to DC. That is the definition of a midpoint. We know it's the midpoint, so we know that the two halves are the same. And now we have that AD is congruent to AD, so that means this segment is congruent to itself. That is the correct, if you said reflexive property of congruence, that is correct. And now if we look, it says the triangles are congruent. What of these statements can we use to say that? Well, we have one, two, three different sides as our statements. So that is the side, side, side triangle congruence theorem. And then finally, we can say that because we have shown these two triangles are congruent, we can show those angles are congruent, meaning this angle is now congruent to this Y. If you said because corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent, that is correct. Now there are other ways we could have done this. Because we know these are congruent, we know that A is on the perpendicular bisector of BC, so D would be the midpoint and there is a perpendicular bisector. Because of that, we would have known that this is perpendicular and we could have used the fact that we have uh, the hypotenuse and a leg. We wouldn't have needed to show this, or we could have used these, the hypotenuse and the leg. We wouldn't have had to use AD. We could have used the hypotenuse leg theorem. We could have also used side angle side. We could have found these two and used this angle. We could have also shown that this whole triangle is congruent to the other one flipped without drawing the perpendicular bisector. So there's multiple ways that you can actually prove this particular theorem. And we just happen to draw the diagonal there, or sorry, that uh, altitude. All right, now let's prove the converse. Now we want to start off with the fact that the angles are congruent and show that these opposite sides have to also be congruent. So angle B is congruent to angle C because, if you said that's given, that is correct. And then we can draw the angle bisector of BAC. So we're going to take this angle and now draw the angle bisector, meaning we're going to draw it so that this and this are congruent. So the angle bisector, again, it just means we can split that 
in half so the angle bisector exists. And because it's the angle bisector, BAD and CAD are congruent angles. That is the definition of angle bisector. Then we have two angles, so we know that in order to prove two triangles are the same, we need a side. So we either need angle angle side or angle side angle. So can we prove these sides are the same or can we prove the non included? So one of these two or this one, which is common. So we can prove that the common one is congruent to itself because of the reflexive property of congruence. And now we have that triangle ABD is congruent to triangle ACD by the, again we have an angle, we have an angle and we have a side. Is that angle side angle or angle angle side? This is angle angle side because the side is not included. This is the angle angle side triangle congruence theorem. And now we can say, once we've shown that those triangles are congruent, we can now say that AB is congruent to AC because, if you said that because corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent, that is correct. Now what does the equilateral triangle theorem say? It says if the triangle is equilateral, meaning the three sides are congruent, then we can also show that the three angles are congruent. The converse says if the three angles are congruent, then the three sides have to be congruent. So we're going to prove this using the isosceles triangle theorem. We're going to take just two at a time. So we know that if AB is congruent to AC, then the sides opposite them, which are B and C, are congruent by the this is the isosceles triangle theorem. We are also given what so that we know A and B are congruent. So how would we do that? We know that we can pick another pair. In this case, it would be AC and BC are congruent so that A and B AC has B is opposite and then BC A is opposite that by the same theorem which is the isosceles triangle theorem and therefore we can combine those two and say since A is congruent to B and B is congruent to C that is the cor correct if you said transitive property of congruence you could also use substitution but that's not a substitution property of congruence and therefore we can combine all of those together to say A is congruent to B, which is congruent to C. What does the converse say? You're going to do the same sort of thing. You're going to take one by one, or I'm mean, sorry, we're going to take them in pairs. How do we know that A and B are congruent? So AB is congruent to AC because B is congruent to which one? And it's the side opposites that the that we go with, so that would be C. This is now the converse of the isosceles triangle theorem. So we started off with the angles now to say the sides are the same. That's the converse of the isosceles triangle theorem. We are also given that angle A is concurrent to angle B, so which sides do we know? Angle A, the opposite of that is BC, and across from B is AC, and we could have given that as AC congruent to BC. So now we know that those two, again, you could either say, you could have said substitution or the transitive property. Substitution is really for equality. This is the transitive property of congruence, and therefore we can combine all of those statements together again. So now the example says a mirror is stitched an equilateral triangle with the given dimensions in centimeters into the center of a banner for her new tutorial service. 
what is the length of each side of the triangle. So even though only two angles are marked, we're told that it's equilateral, meaning all three of them are the same, and therefore we know that all three sides are congruent, so we know that 6x minus 5 has to be the same as 4x plus 7. Now if we subtract the 4x and add the 5, that will give us 2x is 12, we divide and we get x is 6. We want to know the length of each side, so if we put 6 in there, that's 24 plus 7 is 31, and this is 6 times 6 is 30. 6 minus 5 is 31, so those both give 31. In fact, each side is 31 now centimeters, because we're told that it's done in centimeters. All right, the next example says find the measure of the vertex of the angle. So we're given this, only two sides are marked here, so we're going to assume this is an isosceles triangle. We know that this angle and this one have to be congruent, so even though this one's not marked, this one also has to be x degrees. And now we know that 3x plus x plus x, the sum of those angles has to be 180, or 5x is 180. If we divide that by 5, we'll get 36. And now the vertex is which one of those? The vertex is, these are the base angles, that's the vertex. The vertex measure is 3 times that, so 3 times 36 is 108 degrees.